The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is definitely one of the most well-known franchises in pop culture, and these strange turtles have certainly caught their audience's attention. Yep, so we are. I can't handle this. From their unique physiology to their miraculous healing powers and abilities, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are unique creatures who go beyond stereotypical depictions of turtles as slow animals. Try these on for size. What do you know? A perfect fit. Their fascinating humanoid structure combined with their superpowers make them nothing less than physiological wonders, and they also have powerful armor and bodily enhancements that make them even more undefeatable. Take him down. We need answers. You're welcome to try. Today we will be exploring the anatomy of these mutant turtles and tell you everything about them. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. I do that because it was I who made you what you are today. A brief history of their creation and basic features. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came into existence with the help of a mysterious radioactive ooze which caused the turtles to mutate into humanoid creatures. In the original story arc, this radioactive ooze was created by an evil alien race known as the Utrams. However, other storylines explored the possibility of the green ooze being created by humans on purpose or by accident. In any case, the ooze was never supposed to be spread in the outside world and it had quite an effect on the four baby turtles after they were exposed to it. Frank Miller's Daredevil stories inspired this origin story wherein Matt Murdock, also known as Daredevil, was blinded by this same radioactive ooze. In the case of these baby turtles, the green ooze caused them to mutate into humanoid turtles and even gave them additional powers. These mutations were in the form of armored shells and cranial plates and their internal organs also showed certain changes that now resembled human anatomy. They had a chambered heart structure as well as a human digestive system, and their hands also evolved into tridactyl forelimbs with opposable thumbs that allowed them to hold things in their hands. The mutant turtles could then use weapons with their hands and even stand on their feet that somehow only had two digits. The mutant turtles even gained some metahuman power such as enhanced speed, reflexes, and strength, and they could also endure extreme climatic conditions. They had undergone ninjutsu training that had helped them become stronger and they could even feel human emotions as well as adapt to human mannerisms and interests. The four baby turtles who had first transformed into ninja turtles were Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, and Michelangelo. Leonardo was the disciplined and skilled leader of the ninja turtles and he was also the oldest brother among these siblings followed by Raphael. Raphael was the second oldest brother and he was also the strongest of them all. However, he often fought with Leonardo over his decisions and was known for having a temper. Donatello was the smartest of the four turtles and he usually invented new technology and gadgets while maintaining peace among the Ninja Turtles. Finally, Michelangelo was the youngest of the four brothers and was quite a fun-loving creature who did not take his training very seriously. Splinter was the adoptive father of the Ninja Turtles, and other main characters such as April O'Neil and Casey Jones often accompanied the Turtles. Are the mutant turtles warm-blooded creatures? There is no concrete scene confirming that the turtles are warm-blooded creatures, but various fan theories have concluded that they are warm-blooded. Firstly, the turtles are seen exhaling warm air in multiple scenarios, which is only seen among warm-blooded creatures when their bodily heating is warmer than the outside temperature. If the turtles were cold-blooded, their internal temperature would not have exceeded their surroundings temperature, and they would certainly not have been exhaling warm air. The turtles also use blankets in certain temperatures, and they are seen shivering in the cold while also sweating in hot weather, which further proves that they are warm-blooded mammals. How about some egg blue-yum? How do their insanely strong turtle shells work? The Ninja Turtles have incredibly strong shells that are quite similar to regular turtle shells, and the plastron and the carapace of the shell cover their vital bodily organs. These shells have smaller sections where one can clearly see how they are connected to their organs and how the turtle bones come together to form the shell. The Ninja Turtle shell is a replacement for their abdomen muscles and collarbones, and they are essentially a middle ground that helps them maintain a turtle-like appearance while also enabling them to act as humanoids. These shells are super hard and bulletproof, ensuring that the Ninja turtles are well protected in any battle. Shells serve as a shield that protects them from any attacks coming their way, and it sometimes even helps them to knock their opponents off their feet by hurling toward themselves and attacking them with the full force of their shells. Moreover, the ninja turtles could use their shells to hide from their opponents, and they could quickly duck inside the shell. Their spine was located at the top of the shell, which allowed the turtles to retract into the shell whenever they wanted. The shells were designed to support the turtles' entire body weight, and they indeed had quite a complex body structure.
What makes them supremely fast? While turtles are usually portrayed as very slow animals, these mutant turtles were actually quite speedy and could move around places very fast. They were very agile and swift when defending themselves from any attacks or chasing after someone, even with their heavy shells on their backs. They could even break into impressive dance moves and move fast enough to dodge any laser attacks coming their way. In this manner, the mutant turtles almost certainly broke stereotypes about turtles being slow creatures. Mm, you said a mouthful. Why do they need a lot of food to sustain themselves? The mutant turtles seem to especially enjoy pizza and are practically always seen devouring a lot of food. They keep consuming several snacks and multiple meals throughout the day, and they need a lot of energy to sustain themselves and ensure that they have enough power to engage in fights. They are also quite large and heavy, and it makes sense that they require an unusual amount of food to keep going. It is commonly seen that a red-eared slider turtle can survive without food for up to three days, but this is also because they are slow and inactive creatures who do not need to go out and engage in fights like the teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Going away present. Oh wow! An Earth pizza! That's really cool! Are the mutant turtles resistant to cold? Since turtles are reptiles, they have the ability to match their body heat according to the temperature in the outside world. Moreover, turtles usually go into hibernation in the cold weather, and it is seen that they could even freeze during winter and then return to their normal state once the weather starts getting better. However, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles do not have the luxury of going into hibernation and are seen wearing warm clothes to shield themselves from freezing weather. The mutant turtles are usually seen fighting and running around even in cold weather, which indicates that they are not entirely exposed to functioning in harsh weather conditions. Conditions. They can regulate their body heat to an extent where they could survive in the cold without feeling the need to go into hibernation, and they manage cold weather conditions quite well. Of course it's not a pizza oven. It happens to be the world's first time-stopping machine. Did Donatello also have a cyborg body? During the Image comic story arc, Donatello ends up in a fight against cyborgs wherein he is attacked and dropped out of a helicopter. The fall from the height greatly injured his body, but he ended up merging with one of the cyborgs during this incident. There was also a great chance that Donatello might end up losing his senses after the cyborg's CPU had merged with his brain and there was a risk that the CPU would then take control of his mind. Donatello also started showing changes in his behavior after this incident and he was seen exhibiting aggressive behaviors wherein he often went after his enemies without feeling any sense of remorse or empathy. He also had a cyborg body complete with permanent armor and advanced blaster weapons which made him even more powerful than before. How is the fifth turtle, Jenica, so unique? Besides the four baby turtles that mutated due to the radioactive ooze, a fifth member of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles named Jenica was quite unique. Jenica used to be human at first and ended up wounded while working for Shredder, one of the turtles' most formidable opponents. During a particular story arc, Jenica was fatally wounded and Leo stepped in and decided to perform a blood transfusion to help her survive. Leo donated blood to Jenica, who then transformed into a turtleoid after being exposed to mutated blood. Her turtle form was a lot more slender and taller than the rest of the Ninja Turtles, and she usually wore a bright yellow eye mask as a part of her ensemble. She preferred to use a set of claws as her choice of weapon, and she initially struggled to adapt to this life. Since she had a lifetime of human memories within her, she had a tough time dealing with her transformation into an entirely different species. Jenica was a new breed of Ninja Turtle since she was human before her transformation, and she even brought many human attributes to her ninja persona. Started becoming human, I had most recently been with Yoshi. But Yoshi. Did the radioactive ooze make the turtles infertile, or can they reproduce? Since the Ninja Turtles were created due to their exposure to radioactive materials, one would assume that this must have left them infertile and unable to produce. However, it was seen that Ninja Turtles do have the ability to reproduce. While any children of the turtles were never directly a part of the storyline, Michelangelo had ended up having intimate relations with a Styracondon princess named Sari, and the two often went on adventures together. After Michelangelo saved Sari's life on a trip, the two ended up being intimate, and Michelangelo Angelo then woke up the following day and discovered that Sari had hatched some eggs. She even declared that these eggs resulted from their relationship and that they would have children soon. It is still unknown if these eggs will hatch to reveal children since this storyline is not yet complete, but we can certainly look forward to getting some concrete evidence about the Ninja Turtles' reproductive ability. Moreover, the Ninja Turtles often try to flirt with other characters on the show ranging from humans to reptiles. The 2014 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie also showed Megan Fox as April O'Neil, wherein the turtle surprisingly did not attack her and instead returned her phone and let her get away. This suggests that the turtles are not entirely opposed to the idea of forming relations with humans as well. While the logistics of this can be tricky since the mutant turtles cannot mate with regular turtles or humans due to their specific body structure and mutagen, popular opinion is that they can reproduce. Yes! I made it to the 13th level! I'm winning! The Miraculous Healing Powers of Leonardo 
All the Ninja Turtles had their special powers, but Leonardo's ability to heal himself as well as others was undoubtedly one of the most incredible powers exhibited by any of the Turtles. When they received their initial training from Splinter, Leonardo had truly worked hard to achieve all his goals and he had internalized all his knowledge and training. Splinter greatly appreciated Leonardo's efforts and even taught him how to summon the spiritual power of the ninjutsu and use it to heal himself and others. Leonardo aced this as well and he could heal any physical injuries, wounds, or even poisoning. When Leonardo fought against Splinter's evil daughter, Karai, he was infected with a lethal venom that threatened his life. However, Leonardo displayed this power and summoned ninjutsu's power to cure himself in an impressive manner. Uh, they're, they're heading south. No, no, north. Uh, they're heading south and north. <laughs> How did the Turtles explore another realm? The Turtles have often tried to meditate and connect with their spiritual plane, and Splinter helped them form connections to the other side. The Turtles primarily use this connection to tap into the spiritual realm, communicate with Splinter, or even converse with their inner demons. In most cases, the Turtles use this ability to reach out to Splinter and seek his guidance whenever he was inaccessible. On one such occasion, Leonardo and the other Ninja Turtles struggled to contact Splinter while staying in a cabin in the forest. They then decided to meditate for some days and finally communicate with him in the spiritual realm. After after establishing this connection, Splinter asked them to go on different individual journeys to conquer their challenges and face their enemies, and the Ninja Turtles emerged stronger than ever after following this advice. Can the Mutant Turtles be killed? It seems that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are not invincible and have been killed on some occasions. In the recent 2020 comic run, Michelangelo was the sole surviving member of his family, while Leonardo, Donatello, and Raphael ended up dead. All these turtles had died protecting others in different scenarios, and Donatello had died while protecting his father from the evil Foot Ninja's attacks while he was negotiating a peace offer with the evil Oroku Hiroto. Raphael later lost his life while he was at a dinner at Casey and April's place when a group of Foot Ninjas attacked them. Raphael put up a good fight and even defeated most to the foot ninjas, but he finally ended up near the bay during the fight and tragically died after sinking to the bottom of the water body. The eldest ninja turtle Leonardo died while he was protecting the city along with Casey during a robot invasion that was planned by Baxter Stockman. Leonardo and Casey ended up losing their lives in an explosion during the invasion while Michelangelo swore to avenge all his brother's deaths. However, Michelangelo also died in an unfortunate turn of events wherein he finally faced Oroku Hiroto and ended up in a fight with him. While Michelangelo used his powers to put up a good fight, Hiroto's dirty tricks turned out to be quite a challenge. Michelangelo finally died after Hiroto pressed a button on his suit to destroy both of them. For he had beaten the hair. Mm, I love that story. Oh, read it. Conclusion. To sum it up, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were very special creatures who have a special place in the viewer's heart. Their unique anatomy and interesting story arcs have garnered quite some attention, and they will remain to be iconic characters in pop culture. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone. I guess some villainesses just don't know when to quit.